I just say it's a stolen baby. This is everything I cut off. This is actually really embarrassing. <laughs> it's a penis job. I don't think we realize how gross, how disgusting people are. It's a terrible, it's debilitating. Oh, please. Good morning, my Zimbabwean zucchini. So, some good stuff last night. Number one, I submitted one of the partnered posts for review, like for approval. Our contract said, I can't remember if it said one or two revisions, but they cleared it on the first go, which, you know, at its face value, it doesn't really mean very much, but it's actually a really good feeling because it means that I'm aligned with what the, um, the kind of the brand's goals in terms of how they want to promote the product. So that's I, I, like, I, I consider that a win. Um, also, it was kind of up in the air that for the second video in this partnership, uh, I told them that I wasn't going to be able to, like something came up and I wasn't going to be able to get to it until the end of the month. And they were asking for approval on that. They got it, so that's good. Don't have to think of another concept. And it means I can start planning it. So I think that should be our priority today to get that done and out of the way and ready. And then... At the gym, I was thinking, so we have my, uh, my strategy for bringing in viewership to this, which is kind of on a pause right now, because, anyway, so I was thinking, I need, I need a new, I think I need a new innovative strategy for getting viewers here. Like I just, it's been, I think, I edited day 38 today, so that'll go live at six o'clock this after this evening. And I knew I know, always knew that this was gonna be a very slow, long game. And perhaps I shouldn't change up my strategy. Let me share the strategy. Is to take clips from this video, have an editor add the captions, add a text catch from like a title of the video that I provide and also add in, you know, like some kind of retention clip below it, like, you know, surfway, subway surfers or something. So we've been doing that and it's, you know, been going okay. None of the, nothing's gone crazy in terms of views. Do I keep going on that strategy, which I've seen work for lots of other people? Like the, those clips? Or, do I work with ChatGPT, the online version, and try and figure out a new strategy that someone hasn't done yet that could prove to be better? No, no, yeah, I've only done this for about a month. Honestly, it's not even been that long. It's probably only been about 10 days of posting on the social media just because of how long it's been, how long it's taken to set up and then whatever. So I don't know, it's hard because it really interests me to try and come up with a new strategy. But at the same time, is that what I should be spending my time on? When I currently have a system that is proven to work, but I just haven't given it long enough yet. I guess there's nothing wrong with me continuing what I'm doing at the moment while I try and piece together a new strategy, you know? There's nothing stopping me doing that. And if the few deals that we have in the works now come through, then it'll give me a bit of space, some relief, some time to dig into these things. Oh, this was another topic I had. It seems like the BFS podcast is getting canceled. I don't know, I just saw a clip of them talking about or reacting to some girl saying that she can't survive in a nine to five type of world because there's not enough, you don't earn enough money um, you don't have the time. And 
the guys on the podcast were essentially saying the guys being like inclusive, everyone on the podcast. No, you know what? It, I didn't see Josh say anything. I just saw Brianna, chicken fry, whatever, and Dave. Essentially just saying, like, that sucks, you're in that position, but okay, just go get a better job. Go get, go make more money. And everyone seemed to hate that. Everyone hated that. Everyone was like, how can you say that? You're so out of touch. I don't think... There's just this idea now that influencers are just out of touch. They just don't get it. Let me, let me share my perspective. I only just quit my full-time job that I've been doing since I graduated college. So for the past seven or eight years. And that whole time I've been doing content creation in some form, the whole, pretty much the whole time. So this nine to five mindset, yeah, I didn't like it. And it, thankfully I had a pretty decently paying job but you still didn't have that much time. And I worked, I've worked crazy hard to get to a place where I'm now be able to do the content creation full time. But if I start talking about how, you know, if, if I use my own experience to tell someone else, oh, like, that really sucks you're in that position, but just go work harder. That's literally what I did and I got to a place it took me a long time, but I got to a place that gave me that relief. Like, I think we need to stop thinking people are disconnected just because they have a different opinion to what we do. Like, I don't think people understand what goes into the role and the life of an influencer of a, or a content creator. Trust me when I say my nine to five was so much easier than the work I do right now, purely just on a decision basis. My, my, my last job, I like rarely had to make big decisions. Like I, I could just ask someone else or just pull information together. Now I'm making every single decision. I, I, I like it, I really like it. But the pressure and the the risk of each decision is so much higher than it ever used to be at a normal job. And when you finish your normal job at, let's say, 5 p.m., you don't think about it until you start again at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Me, in my job, and I'm pretty sure this is the same for every other influencer and creator, it's, the, it's always on your mind. You're always thinking about decisions to be made. What more could I be doing? Should I have done this differently? What can I do next? You're essentially, there's really no difference between being an influencer or a creator and being a business owner in my head. Okay, let's, um, I think we, we start scripting, yeah? That's a nice change up. Hi. <laughs> uh, so I thought after I took off let me, I've got to give some context, haven't I? The video I did the other day that's going to go live today, which was the ball dropping from a drone. I had, I don't think, I mean, if you've watched the video, you'll see just how much trouble I had. And the biggest pain I had was, <laughs> actually, the first biggest pain I had was the fact that the ball was too heavy. Even though I bought what seemed to be the lightest actual football I could find. So I then spent, I'd say at least an hour, I can't remember how long it was in the video, cutting parts off the ball to try and make it as light as possible. And I thought, let's weigh all those things to see just how much weight I took off. So let's do it in grams. This is everything I cut off the ball. It's basically all the padding and the stitch work, not stitch work. To get all of this on here. So I cut off 153 grams from that ball. Which just and just made it light enough. And the ball was how much? 
Let me have a quick look. I think it was this day. Let's see where I weigh it. Here, 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 here. Must not have been here. It must have been the day before. Ugh, which is on hard drive, big boy. I'm, I'm literally caught. So I have this. <laughs> Where's the flipping straw down there? <laughs> It's a penis straw. <laughs> so this big boy is basically just a big storage solution. So if you open this up, you've, these ones are filled with storage. So it's got two disk drives in there. And because I'm making like 100 gig of content a day, I needed something to store it. So this is where all of my footage is. So if I go to 33, I'm pretty sure it's this video where I weigh it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think I got so let's, I'm just looking for the part where I have the scales. Do I weigh it here? Surely I do. Tell me the weight, Oliver. See how this actually is for a ball. Right. Ten grams lighter. Ten grams lighter than what, you donkey? Than this one? Let's get to the part where I weigh this. That's right, I should have weighed it before I left. I came back and weighed it. Did I weigh it? Yeah, there's the scale. Hello, Judah. Okay. Nice job. 420. 420. So it ended up only being 410 grams, which it was advertised at like 290 grams. So 410 minus, what was this, 150? 53 or something yeah my goodness I almost decreased the weight by half just to make this work so let me throw this away and then I've got a couple of orders I need to package up I don't really remember how many years ago this was now but it has to have been like th three years ago, two or three years ago. I had this, this annoying thing. So if I unplug this, All right. I have been editing off of this for so bloody long. Okay. And this is annoying. Like if I want to move around my laptop or if I want to edit on my lap, it just hangs there. So I, the, the, I think the solution that people used beforehand was just a piece of Velcro. They'd stick the one side here, the other side to this, and then just stick it on. And I thought, I saw this product. Do I have the original? Uh, I need to fix that door. I know I kept it somewhere. Where are you, you bastard? Uh, I thought it was in this, this one. Nine. Nine! But I had, there it is. That's one of them, two of them, three of them. Okay, so we've got a couple of different versions here. So, the first version was this one, okay? So this had a top to it, and it's just a, 
I forget what this is called, but this was designed for a mouse that you'd stick, like a, you know, the Apple Magic Mouse that you'd just stick on here and then you'd slide your mouse in. When I saw this, I thought, dude, that's genius. I could use that for the SSD. But the problem is that this one's just like, it's so thick, it looks huge, and it was kind of gross. And so I found a supplier. I can't remember how many rounds I went through now. But I went through a couple of rounds of trying to get it right, and we ended up on this one. It's much more flexible. Um, the adhesive, you could pull it on and off. So if you change your laptop, you just take it off and put it on the new one. So I had, I don't know, just over a thousand made, started selling them, and people seemed to really like them, just like found it so useful. And to me, it wasn't about how, yeah, I'm gonna make a ton of money. It was like, I made something that I found really useful, so let's, you know, I found then that other people thought that was really cool and would find that useful. So that's when I put them into production. I got a load and then dude, I had quite a few TikToks that did really well back when I was making photo and video content. And I would sell quite a lot of these, lots of exposure. And then just rats started copying this left, right and center and they just started popping up all over the place. And my main focus wasn't on building a business out of this. It was just making content. That's what I enjoyed doing. And so I didn't, you know, bother too much with working on it. And so, um, and then I stopped making content, like advertising it. And then it just slowed down a lot, which I'm okay with. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too salty about it. Uh, make space for someone else. But then... I don't think we realize how gross, how disgusting people are until it comes to business. I've seen two or three people that I knew saw my content with the pouches and then decided to go and make their own and start trying to sell them as if it was their idea. One of them went as far as saying it was the original pouch. And his shit was just a straight copy of mine. He actually, I'll actually expose him right now. He worked for Nanlite, I forget his name now, so I'm like, I think he was bold, he had bold head, white dude, worked on like the, the European market. Um, I think his was called like uh, Joey, that was it, Joey Pouch. You know the, sh the really shitty thing about this guy is, him and I were in conversation about doing some kind of partnership with who he was working for, Nanlite, and my content. So he was obviously watching my content, saw that and decided to say, fuck it, I'm gonna steal this and do it on my own. That was a real bummer. That was, that really, uh, that created a lot of distrust in people. And it sucks, like I don't want to distrust people. I want to be able to trust people, but you have to come, like when it's business, you have to come from this angle of not trusting anyone, which is crappy. And then you had other people that made like other crappy versions. I considered making a bigger pouch for bigger hard drives, like let's say this size, like this size hard drive versus this one, right? And I just, I wasn't that bothered by it. And so I think these were just by that time, these are other ones I'd found online. Like, I think these were actually designed for notebooks to have on your computer. Anyway, people suck booty hole. But every now and again, those will still sell and I just package them up and sell them off. Sell them off, ship them off. But like, I, had a, I had a whole process for this all built up too. I do these really like flamboyant things and they're meant to be, they're meant to be weird. But I think if I don't go along with the fact that they're weird, then they look normal to me and then I just look super. Anyway, all right. So I, it's a bit grim looking now since I stopped selling many, but I would have the pouches here, bags, 
And then I would have a little, like, thank you note that I would write by hand. So it's kind of like a, this is my old brand. Like a, this. And then I would write on there, thank you. QR code that would take them to all my links. Um, sticker, sticker. Where are my NFC? Oh, yeah, NFC tags. These things, bro. These are amazing. Maybe I'll... I'll sh I should start making automations with those. Yeah, so it's a pretty easy process. And then I have, I still have a load of the pouches left over here. And the number of packages I have left. Outrageous, darling. All right, so I'll just grab a stack. Put them up in here. I think I have three orders to do. And I think they're all individual ones. Individual being, yeah, single purchases. Um, yeah, so then I just grab dose bags, surprisingly. Oh, actually, I need to, yeah, I need to make three. No, I need to make four because Another friend asked for one. I'll just send him two. You know, I have a... You know when you, you build... Well, yeah, you know when you build a business. When you build a business... Um, why am I putting these in? Because I don't know if these even work anymore. These are the QR codes. Um, you build a business, you make a product or a service... And I think it's really weird when people want some of it for free. Like my, uh, how do I say this? Goodness me, I can't flip and grab nothing. Grab it, you little boy. Oh, I did grab enough. Um, God, this is, this is actually really embarrassing to say. I spent like nine grand on getting merch made. Like, all the designs were my own. Uh, like, four designs of t-shirt. Two different designs. Well, one design of shorts in two colors. Socks. The hat. Like, this is one of the hats. So it says, Jinkies, across the back here. And then it has the logo on the side. Can't do it, but it's like a dad hat style. This is the one I wear all the time. I got three colors of that made, and then the Jinkies bottles. I've sold like three items, so it hasn't been great. But the actual problem is the fact that all my stuff, I made the decision that because shipping my own product from home is a pain in the ass, I don't like doing it, and I'd rather have less profit and have the time back. So I spent loads of time working with a, a fulfillment center, setting everything up. <laughs> so all my stuff is there. All of my product is at this warehouse and they have a minimum of $250 spend in terms of, there's a charge for uh, grabbing the order from the boxes. There's a charge for, you know, packaging it and then the shipping costs, etc. And if you don't spend $250, then you essentially just get charged $250. And I'm not selling anything, none of my merch through TikTok. It's just not selling. No one seems interested. I don't know if it's because it's crappy stuff or just because no one wants to buy from me or if because TikTok's just not a great place to sell merch since you hit a new audience every time. Anyway, yeah, I've got like 2,000 pieces of product sitting in a fulfillment center that I'm getting charged for every month and I'm not selling any of it. <laughs> so I'm trying to work out, do I get that, go and get that and just have it all shipped here until you know, I get to a place where people would like to buy my merch? Or do I just keep leaving it there and get charged 250 a month? I feel like it's going to cost me about a grand to have everything picked 
and then shipped to my house. So, yeah, I'm just not sure what to do there. I don't want to have to deal with it. I do not want to have to have all the product here and then doing the shipping again. It's just not where I want to be spending my time. There was a time I was shipping like, I'd say eight to 10 orders a day for a pretty consecutive period. But that was because I was making my own content about it, advertising it. And then I stopped. I'm not sure what cheeky little note I'm going to write to the guy I know I'm sending some pouches to. So I'm undecided on that. And then my shipping provider, I don't know, it's not allowing me to create labels to send abroad anymore. Like my shipping cost to send abroad is about $2. It's so cheap in comparison to what is, I think the next price is like 15 or something dollars, which just then is, you can't have shipping the same cost as the product. It's just, it's like in a psychological manner, people just aren't gonna purchase. I mean, I don't know if I would, if I saw that the product was 15 or $17, and then the shipping was the same price, I'd be like, Nah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll miss on that. But I'll tell you something that's really cool, which I'm actually very proud of in a, in a sort of selfish way, is the number of times I've been tagged, mostly by one guy actually. I'll, um, I'll link his TikTok below. Um, his, his name's Beard of the South. And there have been so many times that he's seen someone talking about their problem with the SSD, like the hard drive hanging off their computer or needing a solution for that or something along, along those lines. And he has tagged me. So he's, comment, he's taken the time to comment, tag me and tell the person that I sell one. Do you know how, I'm in the fields for a second. Do you know how cool that is that someone uh, this is the way I think about it. They like me and the content I create and feel like I'm honest enough that they're willing to take time out of their day to promote my product to someone else. I just think, I think that's so good and it gives me a really good feeling. And I'm very thankful to that person. Um, you know, I can't remember I'm pretty sure I sent him some for free. But I'm, let's, should I check on that now? No, let me just, my friggin' thing is locked. 26 minutes, okay. Uh, hey Siri, pod vlog note. Message Beard of the South on TikTok. Nice. Okay, that'll be nice, and I'll check that in 26 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool to me. And then, I mean, pa like packaging them up takes me maybe 60 seconds per item, but then printing off like, the process here. I've got to go to the order inside of my, obviously my st online store, go to there, 
grab the address, go to my shipping provider, uh, enter in the right information, choose all the crap about it, enter their information, which is just a, a manual process. Oh, this person lives North Miami Beach, not a, a bad place to live. Honestly, I think I look at that and I think, oh, not a bad place to live. But I imagine living there and just being like, this seems like hell. From everything I hear about Miami, it just seems gross. And then I've got this little... You, you can kind of see it, this printer here. It's like a cheap, scabby one off of Amazon, but like that, 538. First class, oh, that was certified mail, that was on me. Yeah, it was just some, it was like $60. And, <sighs> I think here's the thing about, should we call it influencers or content creation, the stuff we see online, that when we get sent stuff for free, I think it's so wrong uh, to for me to then talk about the product as being the best product out there. I don't think that that's honest. And actually, like for me, I think I'm, I'm at a point in my life where I would go for a cheaper product that does the same job. And, th and then I think I'll have the realization that, oh, I should have just spent more money on it because now I'm dealing with issues and it doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. So, you know, there's a, a top and tail to it. But to be honest, like that printer, yeah, there are times that um, it doesn't print as clearly as I'd like it to. But for the most part, for how many things I've shipped from there, I'd say I've shipped 800 to 1,000 things using that printer, and it's done me pretty well. But yeah, what I mean by influencers or creators telling you that something they got for free is the best thing out there I don't think is right. You imagine you trust that, you get the product, and it's like, this is actually pretty crap, isn't it? I don't like this. And all because you listen to someone who got something for free. Shame on you. that, there's that. Okie dokie. All right. Oh, stay on page. Okay, I'm going to... You know what, bro? Look, I'm going to show you. This is what I... This is how my life often is. Is it so much now? It used to be. It's like, it's in the SSD pouch. I need to go and print something, so I'm over here. Turn it on. We're gonna plug in. And then I select the files, double click. I don't know why I'm walking you through this process. Sorry, it's not particularly interesting, is it? Select the right printer type. Yeah, two labels done. The other ones I need to get flipping stamps for because it's not sending internationally anymore. So I actually have to leave the house and go to a store. Can you believe that? All right, 
that's that. Okay, I'm gonna write a nice little note on this one. Um, send a couple of emails, and then we'll start planning out the sauna video. Yeah. And why do I look so weird? Greetings, my fellow pimp daddy. I need to stop doing that when, like, I've already done something weird for the intro. You know, for the intros of these videos, I literally just, between the gym and the car, I think of something weird. Like, one of my friends in particular back home in England is, like, he's able, he's so much better at those kind of things. Like, our messages back and forth are just so odd. Let me see. Let me see if legally I can read our recent conversation, because it's bad. Um, okay, go up a few messages. God, we've actually had half serious conversations. Why can I not find them? No way. The last one was January. I honestly thought I could just jump into this chat and find... Okay, here it is. So, it, we're born on the same day, so here's the message that he sent me. Happy birthday, Penelope Pitstop, who got pulled over in for a pit stop only for the pit crew to cream pie her with mascarpone and turn her ass into a cheese cake. And oh, I've lost it. Fuck. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, here he is. And then put her back in the race so that she can come tra so that the cum trail would pour out and cause a cum slick for Peter Perfect to fly out of his car just before the finish line and land ass first on Penelope's umbrella before crossing the finish line anally impaled on it for a joint first place. What the hell? I wasn't too uh, good with this reply. All I said was, well, I'm just glad to see an amicable finish, amicable finish from two wonderful competitors. True professionals in their craft. On, I thought I thought there was more to that. My apologies. Oh dear. All right, so let's let's start planning out the um, sauna videos. So I would really like to do a um, a five day series. Me pen, me fucking pen, you bastard. Okay. Um, sauna. All right, so it's an at-home sauna. It's just going to be propped up in my basement, and it's going to be beautiful. All right, so should I? I, th I feel like a good place to start is to find out what kind of things are in... What are some things I should know about going in a sauna? Let's try this with Mr. Chat GPT. All right, let's... I don't think we need GPT-4, do we? Let's do GPT-3.5 so we don't need the internet. And then screen record. Beautiful. And turn you, darling. What's up with me hair? I was meant to have a haircut yesterday, but I decided to hold off for a week because it costs like $40 for a flipping haircut out here. All right. Uh, asking ChatGPT. Act as a health specialist. 
with a focus on the benefits and drawbacks of sauna use. I want to document my experience using a sauna each day for five days. Give me a list of all the th things I should take into consideration. Okay. So we have all the benefits. Relaxation, stress reduction, good, improved circulation, detoxification, muscle relaxation, relaxation, skin health, better sleep. Drawbacks, dehydration, overheating, cardiovascular risks, skin sensitivity, medications, health conditions, duration and frequency. So avoid spending excess time in the sauna during a single session and limit your daily use to a reasonable duration, typically 15 to 20 minutes. That's good to know. That's what a stupid way of saying it. That's very important to know because for one of the videos, I'm going to be seeing if I can power it with the portable generator and how long I can go for. So I guess the good thing is that if, like I have no idea the power usage of the steamer for the sauna could be minimal, could be pretty big. Like, will I even get to 15 minutes with the portable power? We'll find that out. I think the first day, so if we, if we set up what we do on the different days, like what, what's the focus? I think if I write down, by the way, I think one of the best investments I've made, yes, this whiteboard, but also a desk, just any desk. And then you can buy a whiteboard film from Amazon for like 10 or $20, just throw that over the top. And now you have a whiteboard desk without paying the extra like two, $300 for the desk to come in as a whiteboard desk. And with this, if you end up, you know, marking it, like maybe it's the quality of the whiteboard. I don't know, but it looks pretty scabby. And so I could just buy a new film. All right, darling. So day one is going to be just the experience. Experience. Right, like as if I've, I don't remember the last time I went in a sauna. Like it has to be over a decade ago. seems crazy to think people would believe I've never been in a sauna before. But honestly, I've never been in a sauna for the health benefits. I guess which brings us on to what's the overall goal of this? Why would someone want to see uh, someone go in a sauna for five days? If I think back to, I don't need this light on. If I think back to the whole cold plunge, trend that went on. I don't really know what the goal out of that was for people. It was like, does it actually help you? So for that, perhaps that's it for me. It's to Why would I use a sauna? I mean, honestly, if I think through this, I think the good thing about what I've seen is people say a sauna is a good thing to do in the morning to like a detox. Detox is kind of a, a buzzword on social media. Uh, 
how about mm, I don't need to screen record, do I? So I'm thinking each day is focusing on a different benefit, right? So like, let's say there are five benefits of stress reduction, improved circulation, detoxification, muscle relaxation, skin health, and better sleep. I don't know how So maybe day five is to see if I have a better skin tone at the end. Like if I think back to my needle mat series, the whole goal was to be able to reach a state of relaxation. And through that process, I found that a state of relaxation beyond the state of relaxation is this like hallucination stage, which I think is what a lot of people really liked about it and found very interesting. And so perhaps I find a goal in here and then I push past that goal to find something else that's even bigger, even better. Let me ask. Is it better to use a sauna in the morning? So first thing in the morning or last thing at night? Uh, so we're saying here that a morning sauna session is good for an energizing start, improved productivity, it works as a pre-workout, more for like getting the body ready to work out, not powder pre-workout, and enhanced metabolism. How about we go into it blind on day one and just see what the experience is? Day two, we try first thing in the morning. Day three, evening. I think day three is where I integrate the um, power station. Now, why do I think that? I think episode, episode one is about showing people there's a series and there are going to be more videos on it and showing like my experience doing it. <laughs> That's where I think it gets clever for me. The morning one is just, we want to try it in the morning, but then we talk about the difference between morning versus evening before we even do the evening video. So if people are watching the morning video and they enjoy it and find out that actually there's going to be a comparison against doing it in the evening, they're going to watch the second video if it comes across their feed, unless I just bore the shit out of them. Excuse my French. which is very possible. So 
I think there are two reasons. Yeah, there are two reasons in particular why I think putting the power station on the third, three reasons on the third day is the best. One, because it's in a, it's within the series. Number two, because it's in the middle of the series. And number three, because it's like a second part to the video before. I don't know if I explained that well, but I, I think that's I think that's smart. <laughs> but what do I do on day four? I try morning and evening. Morning. I think that's quite a good idea. And then day five. I had no idea yet. Let's do that meditative space. So we'll compare it to needle mat meditative. All right, I've just had this thought. If I'm doing a video on doing this in the evening, I think one of the, the, the major point to that is that I either then come back with how I feel that went in terms of like, did I sleep better? But my fear is that I'm gonna be focusing too much on that story to involve the power station too much. I guess I'm having another thought as well. Like what if, what if I'm away somewhere, not at home, so not actually around power, and I decide to, that's why I'm using the power. Oh, sorry, Duda. Good girl. And that's why I'm using the power station. I think that's what I want to understand a bit more of. So I do the experience, share my experience of it, and the fact that I then researched, I want to try morning versus evening because there are different benefits. Next day, I try it in the morning. And then the next day I do it in the evening. You know what would make this just like super easy? Is treating it the same as the needle mat series and trying to reach this uh, meditative state. And I could, I could probably just straight up copy the scripts. Um. I really prefer to define all these. What is going on?
And you, like, why do you smell like you're burning? I don't know. In the morning, then the evening, and then needle map meditation. What if... I'm really conflicted because I feel that I should be... If I'm using a portable power station, there is no reason that I should be doing it in the house with a portable power station, right? I mean, that goes without saying. So where would I do it? I'd have to do it outside somewhere. Now I'm caught up on that. I am caught up on that. Right, well, this is a boring section of the video, isn't it? So much swirling around in my head, trying to figure out what to do, what to, what is the best choice. And I'm sure that whatever ideas I come up with now will slightly change as I do the video. Like even if after I do day one and day two. I think my biggest thought is where do I put in the power station and what and why. I just remember actually like train of thought. I was thinking that I use the power station inside because the power went off. And it's kind of like, well, that's very convenient for a paid partnership. It just happened to all happen at the right time. No, that doesn't make sense. Which brought me around to this thinking of this video. It was a paid partnership and it was, I forget the guy's name now, but it was for the, I think it was the Philips One Blade. And he makes, he made storytelling type of content. And it was like, I have to go to this, award ceremony or something, and I'm in a crazy rush, so I'm gonna have a really quick shave with the Phillips One Blade. And it's like, I, I get it from the story standpoint. It's like, oh my gosh, will he get it done in time because he's in such a mad rush and like he's using this Phillips One Blade because he's in a rush and it makes it so easy. I get that. But the actual storyline, that's one of those storylines that you'll see people, you know, it's not gonna happen to a TikTok, but if it was a movie, You'd see people talk about online and like find all of the plot holes, the things that didn't make sense. And so like the reason for that whole video doesn't really make any sense. And now I'm conflicted. Do I script all these out? Not script, sorry. Do I you know, plan everything out here for each of them? Or do I... Like I think... I do the first day, have the experience, and I think the thing that comes out of that ready for the second day is that I, uh, I felt very dehydrated because I didn't know how much I'd sweat, right? Yes, so I should weigh before and 
after. I should also monitor blood pressure. Is it blood pressure? What else? At least those two things. Uh, how much I drink. Water intake. Like this would be sweet as an integration for like liquid IV, which is gonna get me on another rant here. So I made a video, it wasn't for liquid IV, but it was using liquid IV. And it was, does it really make you more hydrated? Which isn't necessarily the goal of liquid IV, it's to hydrate you faster. But that did like 550K views or something. And I go to liquid IV's profile and these biggish brands getting like crappy views. You have the money. Why wouldn't you pay someone, whether it's me or someone else who makes this, you know, that kind of content, for example, why wouldn't you pay them to make videos and then just run those videos as ads? Like find someone who has a proven method and then just pay them to do it instead of wasting so much time on creating posts that only do a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand views. I don't know. I, I have my, I'm sure there are way more things that involved in that that I just have no idea about, but yeah. All right, let's, let's do this. Let me fix you up. I freaking I hate TikTok shop. Oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so the sauna experience day. This I, I think I'll very generally plan out. Should I do what should what should I expect of my first experience in a sauna? Give me a list of things I should expect when trying a sauna for the first time. All right. Good, good, dude. Increased heart, so it's not blood pressure, it's heart rate I need to be monitoring. Um, all right, so let's say, what, why? <laughs> uh, I would like, why do I want to do this? What is the, what's the want? The setup want is to see how. Do you remember I thought about this the other day of switching the setup want and point of no return behind? Setup want is like, what do I? Uh, it's, it's kind of the instigator for the whole video. And then the point of no return is essentially where you're showing the viewer you're getting into the video. But actually, I, I've thought about this. If I give you an example, Jason Bourne, I think it's the first Bourne movie. If we use this flow, the setup want is that he wants to figure out who he is. Like he wakes up on the boat and has no idea who he is, anything like that. But he does find that he has a key or something on him. So then the point of no return is that he takes the key, opens the lockbox in the bank and finds out that he's this trained assassin killer or whatever it is. And that people, well, and that's the catch that he's this trained killer and people are after him, which instigates this whole thing 
the next, I think it's the next two videos after that, of him trying to get out of this life, trying to escape everything and get out. But in TikTok, I don't, like on short form content, I don't think that works because if your hook is, like let's use Jason Bourne, I'm going to try and escape my life as a trained killer. And the video starts off with, let's say it's me on a boat and I wake up and I have no idea who I am. TikTok, you're gonna scroll. You're like, well, that's nothing to do with the hook. So on social media, the setup once this whole part has to directly match the hook, in my opinion. So where I would want to have something like, um, I realized that my skin is in a terrible condition and it's flaking off. So I start doing research. I, I yeah, go online and start doing research on what I could do. But the catch is that all of these things cost a ton of money. And then I decide, oh, I can try an at-home sauna. It's like, you've just wasted 15 or 20 seconds and lost so many viewers because what you've said isn't directly linked to the title. Even if the hook combines a number of clips that show you doing it, I just don't think that style of doing this stands on short form content. I think just people are looking for any reason to leave. Whereas in a movie, you're not thinking like that. You're like, you're there for the movie, unless it's so bad that you end up quitting and just <laughs> finding something else. And I'll tell you why that is. It's because when you go to watch a movie, the, um, you right, Duda? The barrier to watching something new is that you have to leave that video. You have to go and find a new movie, like pick out a new movie and then start that again. It's a pain in the ass and not ideal. But on TikTok, it's scroll. And people like the idea of scrolling. Okay, I've got to take the dogs out. I'll be right back. Maybe we'll get started on the thing we started 32 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, here we go, Mivanwi. I'm thinking the setup want is that always wanted to try a sauna. Okay, brilliant. That's good stuff, Oliver. Always wanted to try a sauna. The point of no return is Step into at-home sauna. Get in sauna. What's the catch? That it's bloody hot. Um, hotter than I expected. Oh, wait. <laughs> that one, them haters. I think the floor should be that I um, I'm like, I don't know if I can do it. Like, am I mentally strong enough? Uh, I don't like discomfort. Let's go with that. So it's hot, oh God, fucking runny nose kind of. Sorry, that's gross, actually. <laughs> Pretty grim. I don't like discomfort. It's way hotter than I expected. And how do I show? Get in sauna, way hotter than expected. Um, all I could think about was getting out. See, honestly, I think this should probably go into the crisis over here. 
and I think I should highlight something different. I should highlight it's hotter than I expected. I think I can kind of make a joke here that the chair I'll be using would be one of those like camping chairs. So even though the camping chair was uncomfortable, it's hotter than I expected. And second guests continuing. Let's just say uncomfortable uncomfortably hot. Uncomfortably hot. It's uncomfortably hot. What if I say, like, while the chair wasn't comfortable? The chair wasn't comfortable. The chair wasn't comfortable, but heat. But heat. made me very uncomfortable. Right? But the heat made me very uncomfortable. Yeah, that, that's not very good, is it? I think we'll go on the heat being uncomfortable, but um, that's not the wording I want. So then I try... Um, I tried just sitting, try just sitting. And result is the prickly sensation. So then Googled what to expect. Uh, Google what? to expect and find out that um, the result is listen to body and not push yourself past comfort level. Yeah, so I Google what to expect and it says listen to your body and not push yourself past your comfort level. But but there has to be some benefits. Question mark. So then, one, two, three, four, one. And then I think that brings us down to the crisis. There has to be some benefits. And so I then look at
No, I, I think this actually should be the banana. Because up here it's give up. What's the other choice? I'm not sure yet. So if listen to your body and not push yourself past your comfort level. So then what are the benefits? Now morning versus evening. I think that's what we find out. All right, so I'm just sitting and I get the prickling sensation because it's too hot. I then Google what I should be expecting. And one of the things is to listen to your body and not push yourself past your comfort level. And then I think we could go down from that result down to, but all I could think about was getting out and not being comfortable. I am, whatever. All I can think about is getting out and how comfortable I am. Here's an idea. Uh, give me a sec, Shay's gonna call. All right, I had a thought in here that we kind of play into the pale white boy. And that's why I'm struggling to deal with the heat. Dude, I love you, but I've been petting you for the last like 10 minutes. Yeah, let's integrate that somehow. And then, so I'm just sitting. I get the prickly sensation. So I Google or like chat GPT what to expect. And it says to listen to your body and not push yourself past comfort level. But we've established that I'm not comfortable with the heat. And I want to push myself through that. So all I could think about was getting out uh, even internet was telling me to give up, right? Jinkies. Whoopsie popper. I'll go. All right, cool. Um, so then I don't, need, I don't think I need crisis that I'm thinking about giving up. But instead of giving up, I Google what are the benefits because there has to be some. All right, I don't think we need the, this because it comes into the crisis. Me doing <laughs> but what are the benefits because there has to be some you get different effects there are different benefits diff benefits of morning versus evening so Hmm. My thinking right now is that 
as I look at this, depending on how I tell the story, it kind of looks like I've just been in there for a few minutes and just been like, yeah, all right, I'm done. So how do I show that time has passed? Even the internet was telling me to give up. But 10 minutes in, 10 minutes or maybe five minutes, I'm not sure. I read that there are different benefits for morning versus evening. So let's try morning tomorrow. To Moz. Okay, I think that's good for the Jeans go out, side, not outside, but out the door. Bro, I never know what you want, Duda. I think I'm gonna mull over how to fit the power station in. My initial idea was to just see if I could stay in until the power station runs out. Go, go, Duda. All right, yeah, I'll mull over that a bit, I think. Um, all right, Shay's gonna be home any minute, so I'll get lunch and we'll see what happens next. Oh, by the way, the strength is, don't like discomfort, uh, what's it called? Embrace discomfort. which doesn't really fit in here. What are the benefits? There has to be some benefits. And then I'll put embrace discomfort before we move on. Okay. Yeah, this might be the most mental comment I've come across about families including their kids in their content. I always think of what would be the 90s equivalent to family vloggers selling home movies to Blockbuster for anybody, anybody to watch or give away for free. That's, that's so weird, but it's so true. Like I'll have my son in my vlogs, but once he reaches the age of two, I'm not gonna include his face anymore. That's, I feel like his face is gonna start morphing into who he's really going to look like. But the interesting thing is that I have chosen the life I live on social media and I've accepted the potential drawbacks. And sometimes I get noticed in public, which is nuts. But like when I go out to a restaurant with my wife and child, I've just now thought that they get seen as well. And I, I guess the hope is that in future, people won't like dox, like take a picture and be like, this is Oliver's son now, you know? That's, that's a very selfish approach, isn't it? It's not all about me. You know what I do? I fake everything. I fake my son's death, act like he doesn't exist anymore. Then if someone sees me in public with my kid, I just say it's a stolen baby. Problem solved. Yeah, I think that's where we go with it. I'm a big fan of these things for animals, for dogs. You can't even see me, can you? You can't even see me, you bastard. Any better? Maybe, probably not. Oh, for goodness sake. This was meant to be a very smooth flip over. All right. So this dog is not ours, it's uh, my sister-in-law's. And um, she likes this toy. It's not really a, a toy, is it? It's I guess it kind of is. 
She likes this toy more than Duda does, who sat on the stairs right above you. And um, I, I really like them too. I like the idea of making the dogs work for their food. But it gave me this idea the other day that if I start getting enough exp expendable income, I'd like to buy like tons of, like as many different dog toys like this that I can find and find out which one my dog prefers. Unfortunately, there are a few other things that are more pressing than something like that <laughs> from a monetary perspective. There you go, Lila. And then this one. Oh, this one's full. Oh, you smell good. Oh, Lila. Not bothered. They have their own things of food over here and water. But I think they prefer eating out of that thing. What do you think, dude? Oh, yeah, dude. Lila, is that tasty? Good girl. I'll tell you what is getting kind of annoying is switching out the mics all the time to like put them back in the box to charge. Because this one, that has to go on top of the camera, plug into the camera, and then this one has to sit on the appell, but both have to go back in there to charge. She's getting, getting annoying. Uh, but I came down here because I got confirmation that the automating, the posting of like TikToks and whatnot is no bueno on make.com. It just can't be done at the moment. Yeah, using the buffer module, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to take it back to Zapier. So now I'm just gonna upgrade my plan, pay her some silly money. I hope this kind of works. See, I was thinking now like, I feel like I should do two hours of the day, every two hours from like 6 a.m. to midnight. And that would cost me probably you know, just shy of a hundred dollars a month for the automations. And then for the channels that go through buffer, which is like the video passes into buffer and then goes out. That's another like, nine times five, 50, 45 bucks. So yeah, we're looking at 150 a month to do that. Let's go for, we'll go for 2000 tasks. That's 50 a month here. Yuki croaky, artichoke. This weird thing, I seem to quite often in the evenings get like my blepharitis plays up. That's what I got told from the doctor one time. But it's where your eyelid has, instead of a clean film, it's just lots of bubbles. I, when, okay. <laughs> when I've done this, we'll go on to that. I'm gonna Google it now. Uh, blepharitis, there we go. All right. I'll share my screen in a minute too. What up, Duda? I actually didn't like the Apple touchpad. Like, did not. Yeah, the touchpad at the top on Apple. The uh, touch bar, I think it's called, yeah. Lots of people didn't like it. I actually have found it really useful as I've gotten used to it. So that's five, $600 that goes out right now. 
upgrade my account. It's an it's an investment. I would give up other things to make that work in terms of money if needed. All right, let's do 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10 p.m. I guess I'll make a midnight then. I'd show you what I'm doing, but it's not particularly interesting. I'm just essentially turning buttons on. Yes, I want that on. I also want to view it in editor. Because I gotta change the schedule from whatever time it's set to 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. I think once I've done this one, I will show you midnight. There we go. Test trigger. Beautiful. So publish. I don't know, V2, version 2. And the name didn't change. Lovely. 12 a.m. Cool. So then, on, on, on. Where is the 12 p.m.? 12 a.m. Cool, on. So we've got three accounts. Um, I did the f just did the first one. Not four, sorry, six. And not 6 a.m., what am I doing? Wow, so we've got six, eight, 10, 12, cool. 10, 12, six, eight. 10, 12, six, eight. Cool, all right. Then those should run, I might I'll run the 6 p.m. one manually now. So that it will actually run, because I kind of want to jump back on getting the content out there as soon as possible. Um, okay, yeah, so I'll do this, and then this will be running a bit more expensive than I expected, and I need to add YouTube to it. Um, but I'll get that done tomorrow. Yeah, because that's more than just a quick few clicks. Okay. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I realized I was meant to show you blepharitis, wasn't I? So here it is, um, sometimes known as granulated eyelids. Uh, so it's like bubbles. Yeah, so it's just an uneven surface. So when it goes to cover liquid across your eyeball. It doesn't cover the eyelid properly. Sorry, it doesn't cover the eye properly. And so it's like feels dry. So when your eyes feel dry, you blink. Like, so I just get that feeling more often. Like I can blink like that might do it for a while, but just single blinks aren't that great. Don't cover much. Oh, good. Not sight threatening. That's good to know. Mine do not look like that. No, sh no shot. No chance. Bloody hell. Poor guy. Whose bra is that? Ah, there we go. It's a terrible. It's debilitating. Oh, please, cash app in bio. It's not there. <laughs> All right. Cool. See you tomorrow.